Hello and welcome to another presentation from the Digital Estonian Pavilion uh, from the Hannover Messe 2021. My name is Florian Marcus and I will be your host for this session. Now we will talk about how to ramp up cybersecurity measures and safeguard data storage with the very smartest of solutions. Um, before we head to the company presentations, we have a few introductory remarks uh, from the Minister of Entrepreneurship and IT uh, at the Republic of Estonia, Mr. Andres Sut. Uh, afterwards, we will head straight to the presentations where you will hear lots of interesting information from various Estonian IT companies in the sector. So have fun and enjoy the show. Tere, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to join the virtual Hanover Messe from Estonia, and I want to congratulate you all for making it happen digitally. It is in times like this where we are forced to adapt, innovate, and take bold steps forward to survive and to thrive. In just one single year, we have taken a giant leap forward in the digitalization of business operations. COVID has pushed us into a new era, a more digital one. Whilst the old and trusted ways of doing business will return in some shape or form, it is also clear that digitalization has come here to stay and to grow. In order to remain competitive in this challenging period, it is crucial to integrate new concepts and smart solutions in our business models and manufacturing processes. It is precisely in this area where Estonia and our companies stand out as reliable and trustworthy partners. Our 25 years of experience in building a digital country and solving problems through smart solutions has made Estonia a leading digital nation in the world. You could even say that doing things digitally has become our DNA in Estonia, both in the public and private sectors. And we are more than excited to offer our expertise and knowledge to new partners. The new industrial revolution has already started. I am confident that you will find Estonian companies will be your trusted partners in this journey ahead. Let's do business together and thank you very much. Heute hier zu sein. Ich werde heute auf Englisch über die Stärkung des menschlichen Elements in der Cybersicherheit in Krisenzeiten sprechen. I have the privilege of having seen cybersecurity from many different angles. First, I've seen it from the government perspective, most recently as the director of NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. Before that, as working as the National Security Advisor for the President of Estonia. Within these jobs, I was regular of the Münchner Sicherheitskonferenz for about five, six years. I now look at cyber from the private sector as I work as the Executive Vice President for Cybersecurity at an Estonian cybersecurity company called Cybexer Technologies. Cybexer Technologies is a NATO awarded company with a mission to empower people in ensuring their cyber defense. We provide governments, international organizations, and private enterprises with cyber awareness training environments, cyber range based research and development, and large scale sophisticated cyber training exercises. Now, you might wonder why should a German company? use Estonian enterprise to do training. Why should we be trusted? Well, I can say that the German government has trusted us, so perhaps so can you. Back in 2017, as part of the Estonian EU Council presidency, Cybexer's online training platform was used uh, to deliver the first time ever EU defense ministers tabletop cybersecurity exercise. 
Then German Defense Minister Ursula von der Leyen liked the experience so much that she invited Cybexer to repeat the tabletop exercise in Berlin in January 2018 to the German Federal Defense Minister, Minister's Management. Last summer, Cybexer's Stratex online platform was used in a series of scenario-based policy discussions for European Union Ministers of Internal Affairs in Helsinki as part of Finnish uh, EU Council Presidency. For the past couple of months, coronavirus has closed our cities, our offices, our schools. The web remains our lifeline. As we are told to work from home and stay away from others, we growingly rely on the cyberspace in getting news, in ordering food, in staying in touch with our extended families, or in organizing conferences like this here. here. Unfortunately, cyber criminals have also aggressively taken use of this crisis. We have seen increase in cyber fraud, in cyber attacks and cyber crimes. Hospitals, research centers, and many different enterprises and private companies have seen attacks in, and uh, phishing emails, ransomware, DDoS attacks, malware and data stealing apps applied. How to counter this? One way would be for employees uh, and enterprises to support the employees in their cyber awareness training. But then again, it, one ha wants to carefully think where to invest money in these difficult times, how to make sure that the training is really effective. Here, I would like to share with you an idea, a solution from the Estonian digital experience of fighting coronavirus. And what we offer, what CyberSir Technologies offers, is a cyber awareness training, or what we call it in Estonia, a cyber hygiene re mapping course, as well as a comprehensive risk assessment for the whole enterprise. What this is, is a platform that incorporates both online course and a risk assessment matrix for the for you as an employer. What uh, an enterprise can get out of this 30-40 minute course is a comprehensive risk assessment covering various areas, such as the employee's personal attitude, knowledge about security and technology, exposure to social media, and the effects of corporate culture. I would now like to give word to my colleague Hans who will walk you through how this course functions in a couple of minutes. Guten Tag, liebe Damen und Herren. My name is Hans Logas, and I work as an analyst at Cyberxor Technologies. Thank you, Merle, for giving me a chance to show our viewers a glimpse of our platform. Our company platform can be installed on your premises or in the cloud, and is accessible as a very easy-to-use website. So after logging in, I see my dashboard here. I have a number of courses and I have not really completed my Cyber Hygiene 3 course. So I start the course and see the first part called quiz. Here I have 10 simple questions which map out my current risks and current threat level and exposure to different risks in cybersecurity. Maybe one question touches on authentication. Do I know what is multi-factor authentication and in how many accounts do I really use it? Next question touches on the topics of USB memory drives. Another one asks me about if I'm processing or sending or saving work-related information in my personal phone, my personal computing device. Other questions ask me to assess how good am I in recognizing scams, malware or phishing in reputable websites like Google or finding them in an emails. After finishing those 10 questions, I get to the core part of the course in the study material. Here I'm presented with 20 cases. These are situations from real life where I have to make a decision 
or assessment about this case. For example, this is a person called Eva who has to choose a password for her new app. Another case touches on topic about USB drives. This is about Tom who is transporting a lot of sensitive information on an external drive. But he really doesn't know if you need to maybe encrypt those documents or leave them plainly readable to everybody. Other cases also present real-life situations where somebody in the office finds confidential documents and really has no idea how to handle this situation without leaking this information externally. Should I really post that information to my social media group chat with the colleagues? Or should I bring those documents to the responsible person in the office? Every case has an automated built-in risk assessment. For example, in this case, where a person gets a request from the CEO to transfer a large sum of money to an external business partner. We ask, what would you do in a similar situation? And I can choose the answer that maybe this is a very risky situation and I would seek confirmation from the CEO by phone. Or by executive's direct request, I should make the payment now. Now, if I choose an answer like that, and maybe I leave a feedback that I really think this is a good idea, I press save and I get automated risk assessment about my behavior. Your answer about making the wire transfer based only on one email is not the lowest risk behavior. And we accompany this risk assessment with a learning material that's easy to grasp and understandable and references external best practices, standards and guidelines. All of the cases, text, images and references to policies and guidelines can be and will be customized to your organization specifics to make the training as effective as possible. After completing the three stages in the course, I reach an automated risk profile which highlight my highest risks and show where I've done pretty good. What makes this risk profile extremely useful is the ability to compare the results across the organization. We have the average of our risk profile here and we see that our company is doing pretty good in detecting risks in removal media but we're not so good at detecting risks at authentication or portable devices. Our attitude and discipline is very good, but people tend to make shortcuts and exceptions. So let's compare those results across some other groups, like between managers, specialists, and other users. And we see the results are different. And this risk assessment really helps us highlight the priorities for additional training, additional security technologies, or other mitigations to lower those risks among those respective categories. Thank you very much for your time and I would really like to show you our platform more thoroughly. So to sum up, we would like to help you to get a tailored cybersecurity comprehensive risk assessment for your company. We help to raise the cyber hygiene skills of your employees. We do that because we believe that in the digitally dependent society, people are the most important resource. And here the rule is simple. Regardless of your age, your job or responsibility, we all need some cyber hygiene skills to stay safe and to not pose risk to others. Now for these watching the, the broadcast, I would like to share a secret. I encourage you to go to our launching website at mycyberhygiene.com and try out free uh, digital uh, cyber hygiene test in German. If you like it, feel free to get in touch with either myself or my colleague Hans and we can discuss more about solutions for your company. Feel Dank. Good morning everyone, my name is Veiko Raima, I'm from uh, Mobilab and today I will talk about how to build a business intelligence dashboard for small and uh, micro businesses. When we drive our car, uh, we continuously check on a speedometer, we need to know how fast we are going and if the curve is ahead we slow down a little bit to pass it and then accelerate afterwards. When I work with small uh, clients and companies uh, with the size of a micro business, I tend to see that they uh, 
drive their business half blindly. So uh, when the virus situation comes, which can be compared with a curve, they might hit uh, brakes too hard and get to the stop, or they might go too fast and not pass the curve at all. So uh, I'm going to give you six steps that I go through usually to uh, build the dashboard for a company that helps them to drive the business. The first step for me is always talk to an accountant. So accountant has a very different role in different uh, companies in different countries. But what I see with the uh, small companies very often is that accountant is good when accountant is invisible. So we uh, give a lot of receipts that we have collected over months, give it to an accountant and hope that we never hear back and the taxes are paid, uh, annual report is made and that's about it. The problem with this approach is that um, accountant tends to live in a parallel world where the uh, income statement, the balances, the usual reports that they uh, work on are not reflecting the business structure of my business model. So I can't use that information for a management decision or the information just comes too late. So when you talk to an accountant, you will make the data available in a way that you can use it later on. The second step for me is always try to identify the main uh, input parameters uh, to your business model. So I'm running a company with 30 people doing software and uh, design. And my in main input is the salaries because the people is the main asset for me. So 85% uh, 80, of my costs are coming from the either salaries or taxes related to the salary. Now, I need to know more because uh, in a small company, people work on a different roles, but I need to know which kind of people and how much they work on the projects. So that is actually related to my revenue. Which uh, hours are spent on uh, customer acquisition costs, so that's related to the hopeful re uh, future revenue, so how I get more people coming to buy my services. And I also need to know how much I'm spending on overheads like uh, office management, uh, accounting included, so how much is this part? So once you start tracking time more, uh, more uh, detailed, that gives you another source of data for your future dashboard. When you have that in place, it's all about bringing it together. So uh, the process is called ETL, it's uh, extract, transform, load. And you can imagine robot walking around and taking data from different sources, putting it into one big database. So data sources could be like a point of, point of sale system. It could be um, accounting software. It could be a work time log. It could be some Excel sheet that you prefer uh, designed before. And now it all goes to one big database where on top of you can build dashboards. We use BigQuery from Google for that reason, and we use BigQuery just because it's a good product when, it, when you scale up. So if you're small at the beginning as a company, but you're going to grow, then the BigQuery is able to grow with you. But there's a bunch of other uh, tools available for that. Once you have data in one place, it's time to think about the uh, metrics. So it's like a speed on your car. But the problem with the car is that uh, that car was invented 100 years ago, your company is new and you don't have exactly the same metrics. So you need to understand how your business model works and what are the KPIs that you need to see frequently. In uh, current virus situation, I've seen companies asking questions like, uh, how long is my runway? So it's a cash, cash flow question. Do I have enough cash to pass the period when my revenue is lower than usual? Uh, cash flow, for example, uh, we can look at the cash on account, but the problem with the cash on account is that uh, it's not accurate enough for my decisions because not all of the cash belongs to me. Some of the cash belongs to my employees because I need to pay the salaries. Some of it belongs to my uh, suppliers because I need to pay the bill. And maybe I even have more cash because I've sent out the invoices, but I haven't received the money yet. So a little, little bit better KPI for that is networking capital. Uh, second example uh, from a KPIs that I've been asked lately is about uh, how large is my velocity and how big percent is my factory is running on a power. So, so imagine the salary again. So people are spending time on uh, real client projects and people are spending time on something else like meetings and overheads. 
So your utilization rate is a good KPI to describe that, that how many of hours are billable work and how many are not. So if, uh, let's say, 40% of hours are billable, it means that you're running too low and you might change the gear back. Maybe, maybe you need to reduce the team because you might not survive the runway that you have ahead. And if you're running too high, let's say 90% uh, of velocity, then you need to maybe hire more because after the curve, you're not using the full potential and not accelerating fast enough. Once you have the KPIs, it's time to build the dashboards. So with the dashboards, it's a uh, few rules. It needs to be on a tool that you can actually change yourself. So uh, it's, uh, it's not a very good idea to build a website that is fixed and everyone is looking at the numbers on that website. It's a better idea to use the tool that you can change, maybe copy, maybe have multiple dashboards because different roles in a company need different information. We use Google Data Studio, but again, there's loads of tools available that you can use and that are easy to use by, uh, by, by any management people. Six-step for me is kind of unique uh, because uh, daily my job is to run the mobile-focused agency, right? So, so mobility is very important. So we actually separate the KPIs that we need on a daily basis, and these we take with us. So we build always a mobile dashboard. And then there are some which we look monthly or weekly on the meetings, and these can be desktop uh, dashboards. So it's important to have some of these dashboards with you all the time, and I can give you an example. So if I'm running a bar, then I need to know what's happened last night. I need to know what's my inventory state, how many people there were buying my products, and maybe I want to make a small adjustments for a no like next night, so, so I need a mobile dashboard telling me that in the morning. So mobile dashboard, take it with you. That's the last step. And really, I genuinely believe that um, any company can build uh, dashboards themselves, go through these tech six steps. But if you think that you need help on a technical side or a design side or just an advice, here's my contacts. Feel free to contact me and I'm happy to help you out. Thank you very much. Thank you.